Hey there, welcome to the quick study guide for chapter 6, Arrays. Today we're diving into the fascinating world of arrays. Get ready to unravel the mysteries of these powerful data structures. Don't worry, I'm here to guide you through it, with a sprinkle of humor along the way. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Just like a well-organized toolbox stores similar tools together, arrays store collections of data in an orderly fashion. Imagine a row of mailboxes, each labeled with a unique number. That's an array. They're everywhere in the digital realm, from storing your contact list to powering those addictive games you love. Understanding arrays is like having a secret weapon in your programming arsenal. So, buckle up and let's explore the exciting world of arrays. A subscript is a number that indicates the position of an array element. Every element in an array has the same data type. Suppose that you have declared a numeric array named values that has 13 elements. The array contains elements values 0 through values 12. The subscripts of any array are always integers. Picture this. You're at a concert and everyone has an assigned seat. Arrays work in a similar way. They provide a structured way to store elements just like those concert seats. Each element in an array has a specific position called an index, starting from zero. Suppose that you have declared a numeric array named numbers, and two of its elements are numbers 1 and numbers 4. Exactly two elements lie between numbers 1 and numbers 4, they have the subscripts 2 and 3. Suppose that you have declared a numeric array named numbers, and two of its elements are numbers 1 and numbers 4. The array has at least five elements but might have more. Now suppose that you want to write a program that inputs customer data, including name, zip code, balance, and region num. At the end of the program, a summary displays the number of customers in each of 12 sales regions who owe more than $1,000 each. You would be likely to use an array named Customer Counts and use the region number as a subscript to identify which element to increase. After you use a variable as an array subscript, you can continue to use the same variable later in the program or you can use a different variable as a subscript. Suppose that you have declared an array as follows, num values 4 equals sign 0, 0, 0, 0. You cannot use a subscript 4 with a 4 element array. The highest allowed subscript is 3. Suppose that you have declared an array as follows, num values 4 equals sign 0, 0, 0, 0. You can output the element with the subscript 3. Filling an array with values during a program's execution is known as populating the array. Two arrays in which each element in one array is associated with the element in the same relative position are parallel. In most modern programming languages, the highest subscript you should use with a 12-element array is 11. It's like counting from the beginning, but we start with 0 instead of 1. The values stored in parallel arrays frequently have an indirect relationship. Section 4. Array Operations Like a Game of Tetris Arrays aren't just about storing data, they're also about manipulating it. We can perform various operations on arrays, just like playing a game of Tetris. Each element in a seven-element array can hold one value. 1. Insertion Imagine adding a new block to your Tetris game. Similarly, we can insert elements into an array. We can add elements at the beginning, end, or even in the middle. 2. Deletion just like clearing a line in Tetris, we can delete elements from an array. We can remove elements based on their index or their value. 3. Searching. Ever tried finding a specific block in a Tetris game? That's what searching in an array is like. We can search for elements based on their value. These operations allow us to modify and manipulate arrays, making them incredibly versatile tools for various programming tasks. An array with three elements could contain the cutoff values 9, 7, and 6. If the score is 9 or greater, the student receives an A. If it is not, but it is 7 or 8, the student receives a B. If that is not the case, but the score is 6, the student receives a C. Otherwise, the letter grade is F. In every array, a subscript is out of bounds when it is negative. It's like having a shortcut to the data you need. Orderly storage arrays keep your data organized and easily accessible just like a well-arranged toolbox. Limitations. Fixed size. Once an array is created, its size is fixed. It's like trying to fit an extra block into a full Tetris game. Type limitation arrays can only store elements of the same data type. No mixing apples and oranges here. Understanding these advantages and limitations helps us use arrays effectively and choose the right data structure for the task at hand. Section 6, Arrays Building Blocks of Programming. Congratulations. You've now ventured into the exciting world of arrays. You can access every element of an array using a while loop or a for loop. 
Arrays may seem like simple concepts, but they're the foundation for many complex data structures and algorithms. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. To see more videos like this, please click in the rectangle in the middle of your screen. To see other videos from this channel, please click the circle on the bottom right. Keep experimenting, keep learning, and keep those arrays organized.